Good morning and welcome to Church Online. We're so glad that you've joined us today. If you're new, you can text the number on the screen and we'd love to reach out and just say thanks. I'm so excited for what God has in store today. Let's dive in. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris Ifill, lead pastor here at Grace River Church. And I want to say thank you so much for watching online at home today. Today, we start a brand new series called Four Lifers. And in this series, we're going to be discovering the keys uh, to having the kind of friendships that will stick around for life. And also for you to be the kind of friend that's a four lifer in somebody else's life. You know, uh, growing up as a kid, there were some movies that like I just absolutely loved watching. And I realize it today why I loved watching those movies as much as I did. It's because uh, there was always great friendships involved in some of these shows, right? So The Goonies is one that I love. I mean, these are these were some close-knit friends uh, that were like, man, we're going to do everything together. We're going to work this out. They had some problems. One of them was going to have to move because of something going on in their family. And they bond together, and they, you know, as a result of it, they don't have to move, which is really cool, right? Uh, another great movie uh, from my childhood is Sandlot. And so... Uh, I love this movie and just felt like I identified with it a little bit. And isn't it crazy to think about the kids that you grew up with in your neighborhood? I know for me, there was a last time we ever hung out together. Like I think about that, like I don't know what that day was, but there was years where on, in the neighborhood that I grew up in that we rode bikes, that we played basketball and baseball and football, and we had all kinds of imagination. We'd play in the snow. We'd do all these things together. But then there was just this one day. And I guarantee you, they don't remember it, and I don't remember it either, that we just stopped. There was a day when all of that ended. And I wonder if you can identify that with a little bit. Like, what was the day that some of your childhood friends, you stopped hanging out? Like, for me, there was a friend of mine, even, that, uh, even in my 20s, that I played, like, Xbox Live with, video games. And we would play every Sunday night this video game called Halo. Every single Sunday. I was a youth pastor. He was a church planter. And we would, every Sunday night, around eight or nine o'clock, we would play Halo until like one or two o'clock in the morning because our day off was on Monday. And then, can I be real with you? That hasn't happened in over 15 years, okay? So like there was a day when we just stopped doing that. We stopped making that relational investment. We stopped hanging out and we still are connected, me and that guy. But like uh, the reality is there's friends like this in your own life that there was just a day that you put it down and you stopped hanging out with them. And there's the TV show Friends. You can take it or leave it, right? Like some people are absolutely in love with the show. I'm not a gigantic fan of the show. Uh, it's, it's good. It's, it's not great. Uh, the show that I love the most uh, that I'm just addicted to, and I could, t I could answer, I've won actual trivia nights on The Office. And so this isn't necessarily just about friendship. These are all people that are coworkers together. But what's amazing is they actually became friends and family as a result of working together. But people are in your lives really for three different reasons. First of all, uh, they're, they're in your lives for a reason. So like sometimes God places somebody in your life just for five minutes or 10 minutes or an hour or a week or a month. And it's just, there's a specific reason. They're going to speak something into your life. They're going to encourage you or you're going to encourage them. And they're just in your life for just a little blip on the radar screen. But there's a reason that they entered into your life. And God was in control of that. There was a reason and a purpose behind it. But there's also people that are in your life for a season. It's not the rest of your life, but it's just a short season. Maybe it was somewhere, somewhere where you worked or where you went to school. Maybe it was somewhere where you lived. And there was a person that was in your life just for a short season. And you learned a lot from that person or you were able to actually make deposits in their lives and like teach them a lot. And then there are people that are in your life for life. Uh, these are people that we call four lifers. And we're all looking, to be honest, we're all looking for friends that are going to be around a long time. We all want four lifers. The hard part is we oftentimes don't want to do the work up front that it requires to be a four lifer ourselves. And so we're going to talk about this uh, throughout this series. This is a three-week series. I think it's going to be really helpful. I want to encourage you, if you can, to attend in person sometime because I think it would really help you take a big, a big next step. So 46% of all Americans report feeling lonely. 46%, over half. And I think if we're honest, I think we've all dealt with some lonely feelings from time to time. But like the problem is to combat the feeling of loneliness, it requires people. You know, God created us and wired us up to be relational individuals. Like God created the, the, the garden. God created the world. God created uh, Adam and, and all the animals that consisted of the world. And, but there was one thing that God noticed after he created everything is that Adam didn't have a companion. Adam felt alone because there was nobody else like him. And I just believe this wholeheartedly. God wired me up and God wired you up for relationships. But here's the problem. Quality relationships require things that we don't have enough of, which is this. They require time. Like, man, 
I don't know about you, but like I don't have, sometimes I don't have the relational capacity because I lack the amount of time it would require to actually build solid friendships. Maybe it's vulnerability. Maybe you've been hurt by a friend or you've gotten close to somebody before and they've, they've wounded you deeply. And as a result of that, man, you've got the walls built up and you're never going to have four lifers because you're unwilling to let down let down the walls. Maybe it's like, it just requires humility. And you realize like, man, I got some prideful stuff in my life and I don't know if I have space uh, to be able to let the guard down and be, and be humble. Also it requires transparency. Like you're going to have to be honest. Like if you're going to have real friends beyond just a surface level, how are you doing? How is the weather? All those things. How's, how was work this week? If you're going to have real friendship, it's going to require you being transparent. And it also, I really believe even with all the technology in the world, I also really believe this it requires proximity. Like it requires that you have to geogra- geographically be close to be able to be connected. And so uh, the Bible says actually a ton about relationships and a ton about friendships. But in Ecclesiastes chapter four, verses nine through 10, uh, Solomon, who's the wisest person to ever live, said this, two people are better than one for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Man, here's the thing. You don't want to fall alone. And what's really important is there's coming a day, metaphorically speaking, where you're going to fall, where you're going to go through a season of difficulty. You're going to go through a really tough valley. And here, here's my encouragement to you. Work ahead of time and have the kind of people in your life that can help pick you up when you fall down. Like when life throws you a curveball, you need the kind of friend that's going to be able to extend their hand and pick you up and dust you off and say, let's go, let's go battle this together. And so uh, the hard thing about friendship, though, is that you become uh, the sum total of the five people that you hang out with the most. So when it comes to friendship, I really believe this, too. It's important that you choose wisely. Don't just say yes to any willing person that wants to be your friend. Now, Jesus befriended a lot of people, right? So Jesus befriended people that typically you wouldn't have assumed like the son of God would be hanging out with. Jesus befriended people that had shady past and shady presence. Jesus befriended people that were tax collectors and drug dealers of the day, people that had really sketchy, sketchy, sketchy past, even with their sexuality. Jesus befriended these people, but the people that he hung out with the most, his four lifers, his best friends, would have been his 12 disciples. And there was three of the 12 that he really spent Uh, an extra amount of time with. And so building quality friendship actually requires two big things. It requires courage and it requires time. First of all, it requires courage to be vulnerable. It just does. It requires courage to be honest. It requires courage to say, hey, I'd like to hang out with you, like to extend an invitation just to hang out. That actually requires courage, but it also requires time. Like if you're going to build quality friendships, what it requires is time because Relationships are built on two factors, talking and listening, and then repeating that cycle over and over and over and over again. And here's the thing. We oftentimes don't have the time that we need to actually make this happen. So Proverbs chapter 27, verse 10 says this about friendship. Never abandon a friend, either yours or your father's. When disaster strikes, you won't have to ask a brother for assistance. Man, You want the kind of friends and you want to be the kind of friend that when disaster strikes, you know, when the Allstate guy comes over and you got all kinds of problems, right? When disaster, when mayhem comes your way, you want to be the kind of friend that is like, okay, I'm here for you. What can I do? And beyond what what you could do, don't just ask, is there anything I can do for you? Real friends stick around and say, okay, here's what I'm doing for you. I'm buying you groceries. I'm going to come over and just pray for you. I'm going to come over and just sit with you and be silent with you, even though your situation is really difficult. Sometimes we don't even know what to say to people. And here's the thing. Oftentimes it's not even in what you say. It's just your actual presence of you just simply being there. Second Thessalonians chapter three, verse six says, and now dear brothers and sisters, we give you this command in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, stay away from all believers who live idle lives and don't follow the tradition they receive from us. This is what, back to what I'm saying, really important that we are careful with who we become friends with. Because some people even like to say, well, I'm a Christian, right? Uh, 
The trouble thing, troubling thing is everybody says they actually they believe in God, but do they actually believe in God by the way they live? It's one thing to believe in God. It's a whole other thing to believe God himself, like to believe that God has a plan for your life. And so be careful about who you pick to be your friends. Um, our, our, in our student ministry here at Grace River, they talk about this all the time. Uh, and it's a quote that gets used a lot, that you show me your friends and I'll show you your future. And, you know, that's, that's a great quote to tell somebody that's 17 years old, right? But it's also a great quote to tell somebody in their 30s and their 40s and their 50s and their 60s. Because, you, listen, you have a future. And who you hang out with, it matters. And so Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17 says, As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. Man, this is the concept in the book of Proverbs, also written by Solomon, that just says, hey, listen, if you want to grow in your relationship with God, you need other people around you that are also growing in the same direction that can sharpen you, that can help you take big, big, big next steps. In the same uh, chapter, chapter uh, 27, verses 5 through 6, an open rebuke's better than a hidden love. Wounds from a sincere friend are better than many kisses from an enemy. You need a friend that cares more about your future than your feelings. That's what you really need. When I look at this passage, oftentimes we have friends that only care about how we feel. Oh, I would tell her this, but how would she respond? Or I would tell him this, but I know that's going to impact them negatively. You need friends that care more about your future five or 10 or 15 or 20 years from now than they care about your current feelings. Because oftentimes, for me, I can give people advice, but oftentimes I need somebody else speaking into my life, giving me advice. Because when you're living your own life and the busyness and the chaos and all of the things happening, Oftentimes you can miss it yourself, and that's why you need a good friend that can sharpen you and make you better. So next steps to commit to today. First of all, would you make a decision to say, I'm going to commit to community? I'm like, dude, I love that you're watching online right now. I think that's awesome. But more than anything, you need authentic Christian community, and that cannot happen just by watching church online. So maybe you live a distance away from Grace River. I want to encourage you, find a local church that believes the Bible near you. And if you need help with that, man, feel free to get on our website, email me. I'm, I'm chris at graceriver.cc. I've got pastor connections all over the nation, and I would love to be able to help connect you with a good uh, local Bible church that can help you take next steps on your journey. But maybe you do live right here in St. Charles County or on the edge of St. Louis County, and we would love to connect with you. And I think this is really important. You've got to commit, though, to community. And so don't just come and attend church, okay? Come and be the church. So Man, next week, this week, if you were to come to church, you would be able to register for a small group. In fact, you could find information about our small groups at graceriver.cc forward slash small groups. This is a great way because I can inspire you in a row, but here's the reality, man. Life change happens in a circle. So not only commit to community, but you yourself be a godly friend yourself to somebody else. That's what I find super interesting is we want the kind of friends that we're not being for somebody else. And so make a decision to say, you know what, I'm going to be the kind of friend that's godly, that loves my friends, that sends them a text message to let them know that I'm praying for them, right? That, that recognizes when their birthday is, that recognizes when they're going through a difficult day, or that celebrates with them whenever they're going through something amazing. And so be that kind of friend, be a godly friend that can encourage somebody else. I really believe the friendships we have shape us and they make us who God desires for us to be. You know, God wants to use people in your life to make you more like Jesus. And oftentimes we've been burned by somebody or we, we allow one bad relationship to wreck all of these. I just want to encourage you, man. You can find a four-lifer, but you've got to be a four-lifer yourself. And so my hope is that you take a big next step today. In fact, I'm going to pray for you uh, as we wrap up this morning. Father, we're grateful for who you are and what you're up to. And God, I pray. For the person watching today that's experiencing depression and loneliness and difficulty, God, I pray that for the season they're in, I, I pray that you would remind them that they're loved. God, I pray that you would remind them that you have a plan for them, that they're not a mistake. And God, I pray, God, that you would allow us to be a friend to a person who needs one. God, that you would allow us to speak truth and to sharpen somebody else's life. Thank you that you've brought friends into my life that have helped me with that. Father, I pray for this series that you help us take big next steps. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Hey, I want to say God bless you. I hope that you have an awesome week ahead of you. Come visit us in person sometime, 830, 945, 11 o'clock, right here at Grace River. God bless. Hi, Grace River. My name's Jen Heck, and on behalf of Grace River Leadership, I want to thank you for being a generous church. People give in several ways. They give spontaneously as needs arise, or they give during a church service as they feel God leading them. But the Bible says in Isaiah 32, 8, that generous people plan to be generous. With summer plans and summer vacations, the average church experiences a dip in their giving, but Grace River isn't the average church. If you value the ministry of Grace River, why not plan to be generous? If generosity is important to you, why not make it automatic? Why not do what the Bible says and plan to give? Here's how easy it is. Go to graceriver.cc forward slash give, then click the button that says give now. Follow the on-screen prompts to set up your reoccurring giving. This is how me and my family do it, and we want to encourage you to do the same. Set it up once and let technology manage it for you. Again, I want to thank you for being a generous church. Let's beat the summer dip.